pray for success for your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, your brother, your sister, or all the 70 people with the rebel family. That was just You came here to celebrate. You know, I told this class inside, I said, part of me wants to tell you congratulations. The other part of me wants to tell you, so what? So you're getting your diploma today. This is nowhere near a stopping point. So what? So what are you going to do next? So what are you going to do to make sure to ensure that you're able to live the lifestyle that you want to live? That you can be a productive citizen wherever you decide to choose. This is nearly just a small path in the road, a small celebration in the road of life. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to be easy. It's not going to get any easier than it has been for the last 18 years. Stand up and fight. Get up. Don't get knocked down. And if you get knocked down, don't stay down. You guys are at So parents, relatives, friends, family, welcome to Grand Valley High School's class of 2015. I'd like to start off by introducing an individual that finished third in, the, in this class, earning the right to be called the historian of the class of 2015. That individual I'd like to call to the stage this time, Mr. Jonathan Marcus. It is this fact that we all live with, it is a fact that we all live with and eventually we all reach the grave. However, I argue that it is this simple fact that you should live your life to the fullest extent possible, to live for a purpose greater than yourself, to be content with what you have in the present, but to never be satisfied with the status quo, to work every day to make a step closer to your dreams never give up the struggle to achieve your dream, even when everyone in your life has long for believing. To so ultimately live every day as if to be your last, because you truly don't know where your last day will be. 
So why not live a courageous life? A life in which you ignore the naysayers in your own self aware fears and work diligently every day to overcome the stumbling blocks that will be thrown in your way. If there's one thing that I've learned during my time here at Johnny Valley High School, is that, is that it takes hard work and perseverance to achieve anything worthwhile. Remember our freshman year when we wrote our first high school essays for Mr. Gregory and it required that they be run in MLA format? And if they deviated from MLA format just a tiny bit, we had to fix and reprint it and review them the process all over again. And if they wasn't perfect, we had to repeat. I don't know about you, but it took me at least a dozen tries before my final paper was in MLA format. Another example occurs in sports, like track and cross country, where you must run countless miles in order to break a PR time. The lesson is simple. To overcome adversity and achieve your big and small dreams that you have set forth in your life, you must be willing to work hard, and as long as it takes to reach your dreams. Sometimes it will be a minute, sometimes an hour, sometimes a day, sometimes a year, and sometimes it will be your entire lifetime in order to reach your dreams. And even then, you may have more endeavors you want to explore. Though the journey of achieving your dreams will be long and hard, know this. Those who have the audacity to forge their own paths through the mountains and valleys of life, departing from the well worn path of complacency and comfort in which many follow, you will be rewarded beyond measure. The rewards will be more than what you thought was possible. Because when you go through the trials and tribulations of the path up there, you develop the most important thing you need to be success, which is character. Like a muscle that requires exercise in order to become stronger, character grows by overcoming hardships. We all face struggles in life, some more than others, but the great equalizer is character. Henry Ford stated, life is a series of experiences, each one makes us bigger, even though sometimes it's hard to realize this. For the world is built to develop character, and we must learn that setbacks and duties which we endure help us in our marching on the road. Those who are faced with hardships have a choice to make, to persist on rising above their circumstances, or allowing circumstances to define their boundaries of lives. Those who have strong character will choose to create lives of their own choosing. People of weak character will walk away from challenges and crumble instead of disciplining themselves and allow obstacles to stop their dreams from becoming reality. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24 states, The hand of the diligent will rule while the slothful will be put to forced labor. This simply means if you don't work towards achieving your own dreams, then you will be working on making someone else's dreams become reality. So why not work hard to achieve your dreams? I have had the honor of being with you guys for five years now, and I've had, in that time, I've got to know each and every one of you on a personal level. I know every last one of you guys' talents and skills, your dreams, and your aspirations in life. And I believe that each and every one of you can achieve them if you're willing to pursue them. And so if you choose to pursue your dream, whenever somebody asks you why you put all so much sweat blood and tears into pursuing your dreams, you tell them this. You only live once. Thank you, class of 2015. Thank you, Mr. Marvis. Hey, so just so that I know that I'm like a little more hip in my lingo now, I'm getting older. What was it? it was YOLO. 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 Yo yo. Are you supposed to yell it like that? Yeah. YOLO. <laughs> so that reminds me of like Marco. Oh, <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Marvis. Next, we would like to introduce the young lady that is finishing second in her class uh, and serving the role as a salutatorian. Not only in these roles, the historian and the salutatorian, these two individuals, Mr. Marvis and Ms. Joy W., also served as the co-presidents of Student Council Leadership. So not only are they meeting their level of academics, they're also taking care of business and leading this school as student leaders and student ambassadors. 
And I can tell you, I can, I can validate the amount of time and effort that they put into this school, this community, and this class. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce your salutatorian, Ms. Jory W. I know that you're not interested in listening to me speak about how bright each of our futures are, that we will persevere through anything, given we've successfully survived AP for all, or simply how interested you're in here speaking me out, listening to me speak at all. But please hear me out. You, my classmates, are truly one of a kind. When I first moved here, I didn't know what to expect. I was so scared, but I can honestly say that I've never felt more welcome in my entire life. This class is filled with genuinely kind people. Even during our most intense rounds of skipbo, I still believe in our kindness. This class is filled with grateful people that feel it is their obligation to give back to those around them. Although half of our class participates in community service organizations, and many are representing community service owners today. We truly understand how important it is to help the community we live in. Most importantly, this class has heart. We grow and love and enable those around us. Many of us could be found on Saturday mornings helping little kids play volleyball. Many of us could be found helping run basketball camps and cheerleading camps for all the little cards. You could find us running booths at the Key Club Carnival, reading at the CFL, and giving devotions at Mesa Vista. This class loves the community and each other. Everyone is truly a friend. We fight fiercely for one another, whether it was on the field or the court, at pep assemblies, during Studman or Powder Puff games, or when the class of 2016 thinks they can actually beat us at something. We never stop fighting for each other. Our class has a unique sense of humor, and no one is ever taken too seriously. Everyone is always greeted with a smile, and we honestly care for each other. As we leave our high school life behind, I ask you to take away one thing. Please never lose your heart for others. Believe in those around you, and please believe in yourself. Never let another feel lonely in your presence. And please continue loving people as intensely as you do right now. This world is going to try and swallow us up. It's going to beat us down and push us to our limits. We are going to be tested and tried. However, I leave you with this. Having a soft heart in a cruel world is courage, not weakness. Thank you, class of 2015. Thank you for being who you are. Go into this world without hesitation. Be brave. God bless you all, and thank you. I like that, what you said, Jordan, about having heart in a cruel world. It's not weakness, but it's courage. This work. This next individual I'd like to bring up to the stands is a young man that I don't know. I think I think uh, have you ever been to like the mall and they have like a knife shop? 
and they have that big old Swiss Army knife in the display case, and it's like huge. It has like every single option that's available on the Swiss Army knife. Have you ever seen that? No. This, that's this guy. Whether whether it's in the classroom, on the track, going uh, outside the country to to serve third world countries, uh, to mentor other people. I mean, you name it. This 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 young man is the Swiss Army knife of all Swiss Swiss Army knives. So it's been a pleasure to be a part of his life and have him a part of Grand Valley High School. Um, even when he yells things to the entire student body that I wish he wouldn't have. Um, I still do appreciate it. So without further ado, your 2015 Val Victoria, Mr. Ben Coleman. Ever since I knew that I might have the opportunity to speak at graduation, I've been thinking about what I would say. I thought about the tremendous honor it would be, and for that I would like to thank everyone who has had a part in making this possible. On behalf of the graduating class, thank you to the teachers for not only helping us learn curriculum, but for teaching us life skills and character that we will always need. Thank you counselors, principals, and administrators for looking out for our best interests, even in the times that we didn't necessarily agree. Thank you coaches for shaping us along in our crafts, and more importantly, shaping us as disciplined individuals. Thank you parents for everything. I wasn't given enough time to recognize everything you've done for us, nor are there words to express the gratitude that we have for you. Mom, Dad, we have had our disagreements, but I cannot begin to explain how much I appreciate all of your support. Thank you, friends and classmates, for keeping our spirits high and making memories that are largely influenced by looking back on high school. Most of all, I would like to say thank you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the Coleman household, we have a motto. We tell others that we relate ourselves to a turtle on a fence post. What do you know about a turtle on a fence post? We ask them. Then we explain that a turtle on a fence post did not get there by itself and will not go anywhere by itself. Similarly, we as a family and as individuals have not made it to where we are on our own merits. I owe everything I am and everything that I have accomplished to God. Without him, I am nothing and will not be here today. In the months preceding this event, I also considered the opportunity that this would be. I know you didn't come to listen to me speak, but to celebrate the graduation of your friends and family. Yet for these few moments, I have your attention. Graduation is a milestone event that brings with it the mixed devotion, emotions of excitement for the future and the joys and sadnesses that come with remembering the past. After all, with the closing of this chapter in our lives, another chapter begins. A chapter filled with new adventures and struggles. A chapter that will be unlike any before and probably unlike any following. For me, sports will be one of my favorite memories to look back on. In fact, the last time I represented Grand Valley was not in the classroom, but on the track as I closed my career as a high school athlete running the 110-meter high hurdle this past weekend. I have loved running this race, and love that I have participated in an event that is so often compared to life. One thing I know about hurdles is that when you clear one, there is always another right there in front of you until the finish. We are graduating and have cleared that hurdle in our lives and we have to recognize that there will be many more to come. You may have hit the hurdle, but let me assure you that a mistake over one hurdle does not necessarily determine the final outcome of the race. 
But if you hit one, it takes extra focus and determination to make up for lost time. No matter how you may have been characterized in high school, in the future you have to decide what you're going to be, what you're going to do, and how you're going to do it. Don't be afraid to fail. You can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. When you allow fear to control your life, you aren't going anywhere. You have to desire excellence more than you desire other things. In the eloquent words of Ray Lewis, most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it more than you want a party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. Most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. In striving for excellence in this life, you have to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. This profound statement is so applicable to us in every aspect of our lives. An athlete sacrifices his comfort as he pushes his body to exhaustion. He disciplines his eating and sleeping habits, all so that he will be ready on the day of competition. A student sacrifices free time and rest in order to educate himself and prepare for testing. A Christian sacrifices the fleeting pleasures of this world that are so tempting to us for the glory of God and advancement of his will. A father cannot provide for his family unless he sacrifices his strength and efforts to make a life for them. The sacrifices we make, we make determine who we will become. Take these things to heart and let them drive you and inspire you to do great things. But don't get me wrong. What is excellence without noble purpose? In the words of John F. Kennedy, efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. We cannot go through life trying for trying's sake, or even worse, not trying. We are here for a reason, and why would we do anything that did not have a purpose? So when you go out into the world and set off to accomplish something, when you have a goal in mind, that you begin to strive for. Ask yourself what your purpose is. What is the meaning behind all of your effort? Why are you doing what you are doing? I would like to be clear. All of the work that I have put in to become the athlete that I am and the student that I am and the person that I am has been solely for the glory of God. To me, there is no greater purpose than fulfilling the will of the Lord. In closing, I want to say a huge congratulations to all my fellow graduates. I want to encourage you, when you see your diploma in the future, to remember the people that were there with you and helping you along the way. The people that helped you become who you are today. I am excited, I am excited to stand here with you as we hold the empty book in our hands in which we will write the stories of our lives. I promise you, if we determine to discipline ourselves and reach for excellence with undying commitment and incorruptible purpose, our book is going to be a bestseller. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. I don't even, I don't even need, I can't even say anything after that, Ben. You should have just done this. Drop the mic, you're done. <laughs> Sorry, Nathan, if I broke it up. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize those students that finished in the top 10% of the class of uh, graduating class of 2015. So if those, these individuals that I call up, please come forward for recognition as well as their top 10% uh, cord. Ben Coleman. Somebody 
Corey Jean Hurt. Jonathan Orbis. Austin Martinez. Jordan Scott. Sun is shining. Nice. Just keep going that way. All right, next. Every year, the graduating class gets together and they vote on class colors, class flower, class song, all this kind of stuff. They also vote on who they would like to hear from at their graduation and at their senior awards night. So the, the individual they asked to speak at their senior awards night was Mr. Jansen. Mr. Jansen, will you please stand to be recognized? If you weren't there, I was very impressed with his integration of social studies and mathematical skills in the same concepts. He informed the students of how many hours they have already heard him talk, and they wanted to hear him talk more. Trust me, we were all a little surprised by that. But, uh, you know, great words of wisdom from Mr. Jansen. Appreciate it very much. Uh, the class did a wonderful job of asking you to speak. This next speaker today... This is his second time speaking at a graduation, and we're hoping it doesn't take a third time to make a charm. The class has asked Mr. Mark Gregory, English teacher and drama teacher, that has been here for nine years serving the students at Grand Valley High School, focusing on teaching all the freshmen in freshman English lit, and then AP English uh, comp, language comp for our seniors, as well as a drama and theater. Very pleased to introduce him to come to speak to you today as the speaker for the class of 2015. As long as he is, does not deviate from the speech that he gave me, I think we'll be under 20 minutes. <laughs> Mr. Mark Gregory. <laughs> My name is Mark Gregory. I'd like to first start, before I get into this mess, by thanking all of you parents and community members. Because without you, I wouldn't have the privilege of working with some amazing people. Your students, children, neighbors. I got more from them than they got from me. All right, 20 minutes? Here we go. 10? Okay. I, okay. I don't know about that. When I was first asked to make this address, my response was, it was your first choice. Followed closely thereafter by, I guess, Mrs. Whalen wasn't available. Jordan and Fancy were kind enough to lie to me, and I was kind enough to follow. I suspect most of us have forgotten the last time I stood here, or we tried to repress it through therapy. And I may be breaking with tradition in the orders, but since Mr. Frank read this already, I think he understands. So before I go any further, I want to mention the amazing dedication it takes for a man like Doug Sentney and a woman like April Hurt to persevere and teach 
for the amount of time that they did. Please join me in celebrating them real quick. I hope I get a shred of that emotion and applause when I retire. I'm reminded of the first time I met Doug. It was my first teacher work day at Grand Valley High School, and Doug asked me if I wanted to go to lunch with him, a retiree at the middle school this year, Van Merritt, and the mystical mountain man, Tim Clinsman. I wondered halfway through that liberal luncheon filled with pro-arts propaganda if I should mention that I wasn't a union member. I'm not a total idiot, I guess. Now as I look back to then, I remember what's most important about my relationship with those four great teachers, those great people. You see, many of us ask what we got from walking the shadows of great people around us. It's so easy to focus on those tangible goods. As Travis Porter, who might be a better choice here today than me, put it, life is much more than a pretty piece of paper. And I hope all of you see that there is much more than just your pretty piece of flair that you get to showboat through our little club, a club of which you will always be a member but not ever really allowed in again. Sure, you can visit, but you're not really an active member anymore, are you guys? So what did you get? You'll get your flair soon enough, and you'll probably use that to get a job or get into college, get a raise, get a car, get a house, get respect, or get a warm spot on your mother's couch for the next 10 years. See, you are, we are focused on getting those things in the future, well, because we're constantly reminded of all the places that you'll go, that you have there. Consume what you must. Have grit. Go get it. Go get them. Right? Huh? The last time I stood here, nobody could hear me because of the wind. Nobody cared because of the wind. But I didn't realize that I was supplying the gale of empty congratulations and positive affirmations and potential possibilities. Sure, that is an important part of being here today. And I agree that you got the best high school education in this county. And I suspect a percentage of you will use that to get something else in the future. However, I hope you realize that you got much more than that. I hope you got what was all around us, but not in the textbook, the standards, the AP test, the free throw line. Again, try to imagine, the last time I stood here, back then, I had hair. I know, it's hard to believe, but if you have any creative creativity left in you, I think you can imagine it. I told people that their children, our students, and fledgling adults, and persevered and could do everything. And it's true. Now, I could tell you that there are people in those stands that have forgotten more than you may ever learn. And it's true. I could tell you that the only thing that separates you, put them together. Again, I could tell you that the only thing that separates you and I is 20-some-odd years and another piece of flair, and it's always been true. I could tell you that you can do whatever it is you want to do as long as you know the right people and ignore the wrong ones, and it's desperately true. I could tell you to have character, and it will guide you. I could tell you to focus on keeping yourself happy no matter what. But I know you guys very well. And I know that you already know all of that. You know? You already know. <laughs> so what is it? Well, now, it's almost time to jump out of that plane. Readiness is all, I suppose, and you're very ready. I hope your parachute is packed right. 
Think of who helped you make it. Do you see your parents, your friends, your guardians, your teachers? Harder, much harder. Do you see your foes and your community? And Corey, of course, your pets. And your collage of memories, your snowstorm in June. I'm sure your parachute will glide and take you where you need to go. So you can get more flair, more things. See, from you guys, the last four years, I've gotten so much. I hear these three speeches, and I breathe your words. But how dare you thank us? Your class that I do To be a part of your wins and losses, I got to live dance offs and stork soldier battle cries. I got to argue and agree. I got to be a part and a whole. And now I plan to go nowhere because I've been everywhere through you. I plan to sit at lunch after this with anyone who wants to be seen with me. And remember that I get to. I get to be a part of humanity, a part of this community. While I'm not exactly a member of this club, to get the honor to serve you is something that I relish and have limitless thanks for. To that note, thank you, Mr. Frank. You know, it certainly takes a village, as the cliche goes, but every town needs a mayor, and you lead us where we want to go. Second, my fellow faculty and staff, thank you for our dysfunctional family. <laughs> Most importantly, the reason I'm here, thank you, class of 2015, for letting me be with you. You're a cataclysmic force in the lives of those around you. And I suspect we shall hear more of that old news as you glide through the free fall eras of life. I hope you always remember that being is the best part of going anywhere or getting anything. Thank you. Be well. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. It's officially a record. All right. Well, at this time, we have some special people that we would like to recognize. I'd like to start off by recognizing three teachers that were nominated to be Teacher of the Year. If they please stand to be recognized. Mr. Mark Gregory was recognized as a finalist for the Teacher of the Year for Grand Valley High School. This is Magruder. And your 2014-2015 Grand Valley High School Teacher of the Year, Miss Jamie Mayfield. If any of you know me, I am not the guy that everybody gets a ribbon, everybody gets a pat on the back, and everybody gets celebrated. If you lose, you lose. If you win, you win. You don't come to the Pee Wee Wrestling Tournament and leave with a medal just because you showed up. Right? That's my belief. It's not yours, I apologize that you feel celebrating the is okay. However, with that mindset, I can stand, and tell you, stand here and tell you that the teachers, the staff, the faculty, the office, the employees of Grand Valley High School are working at 100% capacity for your children. There is not one person in this building that is taking a second off. They are stressed, they are maxed, and they are doing it in the name of your children. So thank you, Ms. Mayfield, for being recognized as the Teacher of the Year. 
And you know what she did? After the little thing when she came into my office to shut the door, she started to tear up and she said, I'm not the only one in this building working hard. I'm not the only one that deserves this recognition. And Jamie, that is the reason why you deserve that recognition, because you are a selfless leader. Thank you, Ms. Mayfield. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Classified person of the year this year is voted upon by Grand Valley High School. Is someone that comes in and does early, early in the morning, gets things done, takes care of everything that our staff or students need to do, gets to know our kids, makes sure there's only 10 kids going in the actual cafeteria area at a time, there's no steam and stuff. Goes above and beyond what she needs to be doing as far as the head custodial, custodian of this high school. But I am pleased to announce that I want to bring forward. She probably won't. I see her, so you're having to come up now. I've only seen her wear, not wear shorts one time. And she is the heart and soul of Grand Valley High School. She will do anything and everything she needs to do. She's on medical leave as we speak, and she's jumping out here, wash, drying off chairs. Miss Vicki Hurwick, please come forward and be recognized. individuals that I recognize that Mr. Gregory kind of alluded to. First one, as you look at your senior video that all these seniors have a copy of, you're going to see this lady appearing in these pictures in the side. Third grade, fourth grade, and then you start seeing things happen in middle school, and in high school. This is, a, this is a young lady that has dedicated her entire life to children. Not just her own, but to all of them. This is, a, this is a young lady that, if a kid is hungry, she'll feed them spiritually or physically. Kids can come to her and get help whether they want it or not. She's going to give it to them. They know it. Regardless of what state law and the health department says, if you need a peanut butter and honey sandwich, she's giving you one. Even if Mr. Prince says, please don't do that. Sorry, boss. It wasn't a term that she likes to use. I've heard that often over the years. You can fire him if you want to, boss, but I'm doing this. We will desperately miss you. Thank you for being a part of Grand Valley High School, a part of these kids' lives. You are truly being missed. Enjoy your time in Arizona. I can't say much more, or else I won't be able to say much at all. Miss April Hart, please come up to be recognized. And if anybody is really good at making posters, we yeah, officially have a job opening. It doesn't pay anything. But uh, if you haven't seen the posters in the time that Miss Hurt puts together to celebrate your kids and what they're doing, they are amazing. There's a lot of things that are amazing that that young lady does. This next individual, Mr. Gregory alluded to, is a young man that's been a part of Grand Valley High School for a number of years. To this day, students come back to the office after graduating. Is Mr. Sidney still here? Yep. I 
go see him. Well, again, according to the new state laws of safe schools, you're going to have to wait until after school and before school to go down the hallway. All right. And that's something in the nine years I've been here, some kids have come back, you know, hey, is Mr. Kane still working here? Hey, is Ms. Cowan still here? Well, they retired, they're gone, and Mr. Sidney, you were out with your way. You got your van packed, have your easel in it, and your bumper sticker says, oh, it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. So as you travel throughout the United States, often wherever you would like, you finally get to be that old hippie living in the van down by the river. <laughs> Your passion and enthusiasm for art will be here for generations to come. You've established a culture and a, and, and a desire for the art world. You've poured into the children of our community. And it's time for you to enjoy life on your terms. So Mr. Doug Sidney, please come forward to be recognized. Thank you for allowing us to take time to recognize some people that have given their heart, soul, and life to this, these children. I know it's getting a little chillier. We're going to warm things up a little bit. There's a tradition here at Grand Valley High School called the Ceremony of Roses. So, you guys, underneath your chairs are your flowers that you ordered. We're going to take a few minutes for them to deliver these flowers to those individuals that they want to thank for what they've done for them in their life. So we'll start off by opening up, play some music. If you have 36 flowers, you better run. <laughs> Ready? Go. I'm gonna need you to raise your glass. I don't care what you're playing. Look nice that you can't take back. We live hard, we love back. We all thought that we'd get rich fast. Time to play now, we can do best. Find out if we need cash. Don't compare with friends at last. See, we won't forget where we came from. The city won't change us. We beat to the center. No, we won't forget where we came from. The city can't change us. We beat to the center. The center. Here's to the chiefs and glasses, let go of the lives of hands. People who had your back, the world is wide out of stand. See, we won't forget where we came from, the same will change us, we beat to the same drum. No, we won't forget where we came from, the same can't change us, we beat to the same drum. Oh, no. 
Kaylee gave out 36, like, 
47. All right. Well, next I'd like to uh, introduce our academic advisor, uh, assessment coordinator in charge of all the AP uh, curriculum assessments as well as Wonderful Park. And uh, that is P-A-R-C-C -C for next year. And if you guys want to opt your kids out, maybe please spell it correctly. Um, but hopefully we won't be <laughs> needing to take that next year. <laughs> Anyways, as we move forward, I'd like to introduce our academic advisor, uh, someone that's making sure your plans for your kids are all in line as they change, as they move, trying to make sure that um, they or she is working for your kids. I do have to share one of the compliments she got today before we walk out. Uh, as we're in there before uh, the ceremony, I asked the kids to go around and just authentically thank somebody. Be specific for what you think, whether they did why you why you were here at Grand Valley High School. So you can be the judge of this comment. I think it's a compliment. I conferred with Miss Whalen to see if this was a compliment. And I will protect the guilty and I won't throw anybody into the proverbial bus. But the compliment that Miss Abby basically got was Thank you for having your foot up my backside. I really needed it. Without further ado, Miss Abby. I am breathing and my teeth are chattering. But for a moment, I want to talk about it. I know my husband, when he came out here, said, Are you kidding me? It's raining. But that is a great example of life. It rains, it pours, some days it blows, it snows, but it will eventually be beautiful. Those are the things you have to remember moving forward. It will never go away, but it will eventually be beautiful again. Good morning and congratulations to the graduating class of 2015 and the parents, friends, and family who have offered their never-ending support to this special group of graduates. I am Chris Abbey, and I have been honored to work with these students for the past four years, both as a teacher and as an academic advisor. I think these are my last students to have with me. They're special. I am very proud of this class, and I am proud of their accomplishments. I'm here to give you some facts and some statistics about this class. Of the 63 students graduating today, 37 will be entering a college or university in the fall. Of that, 23 say they will continue on to a four-year university while 14 will be entering a two-year college or technical or vocational school. 11 students will be entering the workforce, and a few are still undecided, and that's okay. I would now like to take a moment to recognize our graduating seniors who will be honoring and serving our country by enlisting in the armed forces. If I could have all our veterans in attendance today, please stand and be recognized for your service. Thank you. And please remain standing while I with Jared Permenter and Tyler Matthews. Can we please, one last time, extend our appreciation to the seniors and our attending veterans for the big round of applause. The Colorado Commission of Higher Education adopted the Higher Education Admission Report, which we call the Peer Report. 
which are entry requirements for students planning to attend any of Colorado's public four-year colleges or universities. Students planning to attend a college or university are encouraged to complete the maximum allowable content courses here at Grand Valley High School. We want to recognize students who have completed their here requirements with an honors diploma, which signifies the completion of four years of English, four years of math, four years of science, four years of social studies, as well as two years of foreign language. Would the following students stand and be recognized? Erica Anderson, Gerard Carrasco, Kara Chenoweth, Ben Coleman, Jory Dovey, Wiley Gardner, Julia Hall, Leon Hernandez, Daniela Herrera, Tori Hurst, JT Kellabu, John Marvis, Austin Martinez, Francisco Muniton, Marissa P, Carla Pena, Jenny Ponce, Jordan Rito, and Jordan Scott. The National Honor Society is an organization that recognizes students who possess four important qualities, scholarship, leadership, character, and service. Students are invited to join NHS based on the recommendations of a faculty council. NHS represents the very best that Grand Valley has to offer. Would the graduating members of NHS please stand when I call the names? Ben Coleman, Kira Chenoweth, Jory Dovey, Corey Kirk, John Marvis, and Corey Reader. Wednesday, we had the opportunity to present scholarship awards to the deserving seniors who are going on to continue their education. I am proud to announce that to date, our students have earned over $600,000 in scholarships. The Genevieve Cassata scholarships, which are very special to our community, have been awarded to 11 Grand Valley students. In total, over 60 scholarships were awarded to Grand Valley High School students, while 11 graduates will receive three or more scholarships. All of these recipients are indicative of the community's commitment to you. At this time, stand and be recognized. People that got scholarships, stand and be recognized. Thank you. I thank all of you for helping us celebrate the many accomplishments of this graduating class. Um, they are truly special, and I think it was Jory that said that. It's the kindest class that she believes has ever gone through Grand Valley, and I have to agree with her. There is a lot of good people sitting here today. Congratulations and thank you. Thanks, Ms. Abby. Next, uh, we have some other awards and recognitions that we need to, to do as before we get to the reason you're all here, right? As long as it didn't get wet. So I would like to, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Walk, who is Grand Valley High School's Assistant Principal and Activities Director, as he has some awards that he needs to hand out and recognize some more of you. So Mr. Walk. Well, here you are. You made it. Well, at least until we decide you made it. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, as Mr. Frank said, I am the Activities Director, Assistant Principal here. 
I get to celebrate these kids as a fan when they participate in all their activities. And I also get to uh, remind them of the rules periodically. Right, Mr. Clover? We're good. Hey, so one of the things that we're passionate about at Grand Valley High School is recognizing all that we give. You've heard the students speak. you heard the adults speak. We're very blessed to be in this community and to be surrounded by fantastic people. I, uh, several years ago when I got to Parachute, I, I read policy and I looked at the policy and the school board, uh, we revived it. It was a community service policy because it's very important to me that these kids recognize all that's given to them. We have some generous, generous sponsors and donors that give financially and give in kind to make sure that these students have tremendous opportunities in their extracurriculars. I believe in extracurriculars, and I believe it provides an enrichment and enhancement to the classroom. So through that, this policy of community service, where the board recognizes community service, was put into place. They asked all of our activities, whether it be Key Club, Diversity Club, um, the FCCLA, Art Club, the students give at least 25 hours in their club to the community in some capacity. So in addition to that, we have a reward, a recognition, an honor that the kids receive for, for giving over 100 additional hours. The class of 2015 has given to this community, and this is just documented, I know it's far more than that, but they have given 1,318 hours back to the community. That's outstanding. Congratulations, class. The individuals that are getting the recognition today with the red cord that hangs around their neck, in addition to the money sign in the, um, the program, because they're money. I want to recognize, if I can call your name, please stand to be recognized. Mr. Ben Coleman, 100 additional hours of community service. And this young lady I have to especially recognize because I missed her Wednesday night because, as most of you know, I don't function well without my teacher assistants. And with the new AP schedule, I didn't have any of you guys for two weeks. So obviously, I'm not proficient at my job. But this young lady did 104 community hours, did not get recognized Wednesday night, but is being recognized now just because she's a class act on top of it, Miss Megan Smith. 105 hours, this is John Marbus. 7.5 hours, Jordan Scott. 111 hours, Jory Dovey. 112 hours, Daniela Barrera. And 130.5 hours, Corey Jean Hurts. Thank you and continue to give. Please continue to give. You'll only make the difference in the world around you. Thank you. Receiving e club honors, an additional honor to their hours, they, they also contributed 100 hours of service and they had to attend a variety of different requirements. Ms. Julie Lana is the um, sponsor of that activity, in addition to the uh, Parachute Battle Mesa Kiwanians. They support our kids in a fantastic service organization at P Club. Wearing their honors around their necks are Mr. JT Kellebrew and Francisco Newton. Congratulations and thank you. At Grand Valley High School, again, I have to recognize somebody who just is integral to the part of activities, and that's our uh, head secretary, my activities secretary, Ms. Tracy Chartier. She hates this, and I probably get kicked later. But she does an amazing job. <laughs> Stephanie Hart, her sidekick, I appreciate all that Stephanie does putting up with us. And I'm not, we have to turn in a proportionality survey to color our high school activities to ensure that we are staying gender equitable in our participation numbers. I talked to a lot of the activities directors up and down the valley, and our participation rate is stellar. In addition to our uh, 14 athletic programs, we have 13 activity programs that the students can be part of. And 74% of our student body participates in some sort of activity the academic expectations and the behavior expectations to be a cardinal. Very outstanding job, Grand Valley. If you wore a cardinal jersey, 
class of 2015. If you were part of a club, stand up and let these people know how many of you were involved in something. The theater, the music, all of it. You guys are in. Congratulations. Special recognition, I'd like you to take a look to your right, my left, the gentleman standing with the camera and the gray shirt over here. His name is John Mitchell. Works for the Post Independent Citizen Telegram. And um, since I've been here, I've, been work I've worked with two. This is, he's the second of the reporters who cover our students and make sure that Grand Valley High School is represented and that, yes, there is life past Glenwood. He makes sure these kids are covered. He approached his activities directors in an email a couple of weeks ago and said, you know, we have some amazing kids in this county, and um, I want to recognize them not only for their athletic ability, but for their um, just who they are in, their, in your school. And we met this past Wednesday, a bunch of us, media and um, athletic administrators, activity administrators, and I got to sit around a table and hear how fantastic some kids are at Glenwood Springs High School, Rifle High School, Coleridge, uh, and also at Grand Valley and at Warren Cork High School. And we celebrated our kids, and I'm proud to announce that they were, we picked one female and one male athlete of male student athlete of the year, and John's going to be putting an article out recognizing those. We had four nominees from Grand Valley High School, um, and it was a true pleasure to sit there and listen because I couldn't vote for my kids, but to hear what the other athletic administrators said about my kids, and what the media said about I shouldn't say mine, our kids, and. Um, Fantastic stuff. So recognizing the paper will be Ben Coleman, uh, Jordan Scott, and um, Sam Parker. But this year's female student athlete for Garfield County, the first ever award given, the inaugural, will go to Kira Chenoweth. Very, very proud of last and definitely not least. There are a lot of people that put in a lot of hours to make sure you guys are successful. I want to take this chance to honor these individuals. If you work for Garfield 16 in any capacity and you serve kids, please stand up and be recognized at this time. Please stand up. Teachers, coaches, custodians, kitchen staff, stand up and be recognized. You guys are amazing people. All right. Ready for some diplomas? Woo! Let's do this. Ooh, really? <laughs> All right, an hour and a half later, we're ready to do what we came to do. And the sun is shining again. Just wait five minutes. All right. Start out with our diplomas. Now presenting Miss Chris Abbey, Houston Jacob Stansberry. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Now presenting Miss Janie Mayfield. Richard Timothy Lynn Campbell. Now presenting Mr. Josh Allen. Megan Noel Smith. Be the change you want to see in the world. Kaylee Ray Mary. Thank you, family and friends, for all your support. Now presenting Ms. Michaela Matheson Buick. Billy Vern Cordova. I don't have friends, I got family. Sandra Veronica Munoz Meza. The tassel was worth the hassle. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Now presenting Miss Tracy Chartier. Haley Aiden Flores Chavez. 
Wherever you go, go with all your heart. Derek Robert Pollock. Now presenting Miss Irene Doyle. Joshua Ray White. Thank you. Luis Eduardo Ruiz Rodriguez. I want to thank my parents and family for everything. Now presenting Mr. Mark Gregory. Zachary Wayne Hover. Even the smallest person can change the course of history. Nice job, buddy. Cesar Tavares Luna. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Riley Shea Gardner. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for... Thanks, Mom and Dad, for always believing. Love you guys. Maybe flats next time. <laughs> now presenting Mr. Amanda Ostmiller. <laughs> Carla Guadalupe Pinavarez. <laughs> God, familia, best friends and coaches, thank you. I love you. Tristan Tanner Lamont. The eyes are useless if the mind is blind. Thanks. Now presenting Mr. Scott Parker. Yvonne Ulysses Baltazar. Marissa Nicole Peace. <laughs> Thanks, Mom, for putting up with me. I love you. <laughs> Sam Lewis Parker. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, who pushed me to success. Mountaineer basketball freshman. Elizabeth Marie Rasick. <laughs> Wow, I actually did it. Thanks for your support, family. Now presenting Mr. Travis Porter. Benjamin Carl Coleman. In order to succeed, we must first believe we can. over the opinion of the sheep. Veneer, David Romero. This wasn't like High School Musical at all. Now presenting Miss Lisa Schultz. Oh, no, Miss Stephanie Hart. Logan Jean Olson. Thank you, Mom, Dad, Tristan, Stephanie, and friends. Love you. Now presenting Miss Lisa Schultz. 
Natasha Ann Holm. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for helping me through the years. Now presenting Mr. Jake Higuera. Jordan Mackenzie Scott. Keep a smile on your face and purpose in your heart. One last time, sir, are you good at that? Now presenting Grand Valley High School art teacher, Mr. Doug Sentney. They're comparing hair notes. Um, <laughs> and Peyton doesn't care. She wants a diploma. Peyton, then I'll drink house. <laughs> Thanks, friends and family, for all your love and support. Now presenting our assistant wrestling coach, Mr. Todd Jacobs. And the young man some of you came to see, right? Colton Lynn Rubble! Thank you, friends, family, and our Lord for everything. Let's wait till he's good to go, really? Okay. Jesus Maldonado Campos! Presenting history teacher, track coach, Mr. Mark Jansen. <laughs> Jory Michelle Dovey. <laughs> Thank you, family, for giving me the world. I love you. Let him go. I okay, guess sure you want him? Okay. Dustin Phillips makes him. Thank you, Mom, Dad, Douglas, Grandma, and friends. You're the best. Corey Jean Hurst. Be thankful, be humble, and give glory to God. Now presenting our registrar and somebody I think is pretty darn cool, Miss Brenda Locke. Daniela Ariana Herrera Rana. If your dreams don't scare you, then they're not big enough. Jared Lee Hermiter. <laughs> Thanks, friends and family, for all you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, this kid was a freshman. We had a basketball game. And I, you know, going around 20 different directions looking for things. I got stuff I got to do. But Mr. Walk, I can't get in my locker. I need my uniform. Are you serious? Do you not remember your combination? My parents won't let me have combinations. They make me have keys. Did you retrace your steps? Yeah, I, I, I yes, I've walked it. All right, let me go get the bolt cutters. Go get the bolt cutters. I mean, and of course, you had to have those massive padlocks. Like, I am sweating and finally popped that thing. And he's like, thanks. Ten minutes later, he comes back, I found my key. <laughs> so I took it. And it has been hanging on my office lock. So I'm going to give this to your graduation. Tyler Owen Matthews.
Introducing our physical education teacher, Mr. Mike Johnson. Leon Philip Vincent Hernandez, Jr. Thank you, mom, dad, family, and friends. I love you guys. Now presenting science teacher, track coach, cross country coach, Mrs. Kimberly Whalen. Anna Dulcina Bernabe Serrano. Thank you, mom and dad, for supporting me always, and thank you, friends. Emily Jessica Hubbard. Going in one more round when you don't think you can. All right. Joel Carrasco Aguina. No matter where you're from, your dreams are valid. Chloe Lauren Riedel. Thank you for the support, especially from you, Mom. You ready for this? All right. Jonathan Patrick Marvis. I would like to thank my parents for their sacrifices. Now presenting music teacher, Miss Leslie Kaminsky. I always get the interesting ones. Joseph Robert McCready. And his quote, flies like honey, but honeys like it when you are fly. Now presenting science teacher and outdoor club sponsor, Mr. Clint Whitley. Taylor Don Kump. Thanks to everyone who supported and believed in me. Now presenting ELL instructor, interventionist, and key club sponsor, Ms. Julie Lana. Francisco Javier Munitan Ramos. Introducing and presenting English teacher, Ms. Brooke Whitman. Caitlin Marie Alvarado. This moment will just be another story someday. Jenny. Arali Ponce Juarez. <laughs> Journey of a thousand miles begin with a single step. Julia Michelle Hall. <laughs> and her quote is from Dr. Seuss Kid, you'll move mountains. Now presenting our principal, Mr. Ryan Frink. Miklo Armando Apolinar. Thank you, Mom and Dad. I love you all. Now presenting, Mr. David Watt. Erica Lee Sanderson. Whether you say you can or can't, you're right.
Zachary David Beasley. Thanks to my parents, especially my friends, my family, and Mr. Gregory. What? Mr. Gregory? <laughs> yeah, baby! See, thanks, Zach. Yeah. Kara Brooks Chenoweth. Yeah. Spend each day living for everything and expecting nothing. John 14, 27. Come on! <laughs> A lot of horrible memories are coming forward at this point. <laughs> and you know it takes a lot to keep me quiet. <laughs> Jacob James Hagwood. <laughs> Thank you for the support, Mom, Joe, Brian, and Sierra. He's been trying to hug me for five years. <laughs> I refused to hug him until he had his diploma and he was 18. <laughs> Jay Thomas Killebrew. <laughs> Thanks, family and friends, for the support. Love you guys. Salvador Moreno Ortiz. Stressed, depressed, but always well dressed. Austin Isaac Martinez. Thanks, Mom, Dad, Brother Isaiah, family, and friends. This last individual, we have something, you know, uh, Mr. Walk asked employees of this district and people that work at the school district to stand up and be recognized early. One of the things when you get into this, the, this role in education, it's not a business of education. It's a lifestyle and, and, and uh, you open your heart and you do what you can to try to do best for kids. At the end of the day, I don't even know. Did you know 75% of statistics are all made up on the spot? So I would say the 75% of the things that you guys learned in class, you're probably not really going to ever use again. Jay Leno doesn't have his own show, so he's not going to show up on the street and ask you questions and you're going to look stupid. Right? But the things and the relationships that you build to help succeed and help move on and help move yourself forward, the things that teachers and educators do every day. Today we wanted to honor somebody, an educator, a very specific educator. Lane, we're going to do this a little different. Why don't you come up here for me, then? Mr. Sorensen, would you please stand and be recognized? If you know Mr. Sorensen at all, he is not somebody who's going to go around gloating about how awesome of an individual he is, how much he cares for kids, putting others first, servant leadership. I could continue to talk. But Lane came to me, and Lane shared a very touching story. Lane's father passed away when he was in middle school. And he said Mr. Sorensen was there. He wrote this wonderful letter that I'm going to share with Mr. Sorensen. About what Mr. Sorensen did on a daily basis, making sure that Lane's head was right, just giving him time, listening, encouraging him, not as his principal, not just as a male mentor, but as a friend. These are, this is a story that occurs on a daily basis in the walls of our educational buildings. So Mr. Sorensen, behalf of Lane, Tan Ryden, he wanted to thank you personally and publicly for saving his life in middle school.
It was a muddy road, but I ran through it. Congratulations. Education Garfield County School District 16. I'm here to verify that every individual that received a diploma day has met or exceeded those standards which are outlined in board policy to graduate from Garfield County School District 16 and Grand Valley High School. Thank you for your continued support for our academics, activities, and the movement of we have with our children. You did it! Most of you have your diplomas in that folder. It is 11.59 and I have tried to be done by noon. If I could please ask Kira Chenoweth to come up and if I could have you bow your head as she ends in our benediction. join Mr. Ben Coleman and the class of 2015. Class of 2015, please rise. Remember two things, right? Two things. Grand Valley High School class of 2015, please join me as we move our tassels from the left to the right, signifying our graduation. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.